Okay, we are recording, you guys. I am so excited to be kicking off this Renew Challenge with you guys. Um, it has been just a whirlwind since it got started, and um, I know a lot of you guys have already started. Some of you guys have not, but have already selected your start date, and all of you guys will be starting at some point in January. So one, we're super thankful that you guys have decided to do this with us, and we cannot wait to see your results at the end of the 60 days. Personally, I started on the second, so I'm a couple days in and going strong. Um, but now on to the, the point of this call. Um, first, we want you guys to walk away super empowered. Um, we want you to walk away with a plan and to kind of be well on your way to developing a more healthy relationship with food, because I think that's really, really important. Many of us can get into this mindset of thinking that food is the devil, it's the enemy. And really it's not. Food is fuel for our body. Um, it can be a tool for healing, for energy, for transformation. Um, it can also be a source of our demise and our health decline as well. So our goal on this call tonight is to help kind of empower you guys, educate you guys, and give you guys a plan of action for the next 60 days on our Renew Challenge. Um, so we're gonna cover our products in the beginning, um, how they work, how to get started on it, um, tools and kind of where to go to find all those tools um, throughout this challenge. Um, and then also we want to kind of cover these healthy lifestyles that we've, that we've been talking about. And one thing that I wanna say about each of these lifestyles as we're going through them, um, and we're gonna cover each of them, uh, five of them to be exact, um, is that each one is very, very unique. And there is not a one size fits all solution for every single person. There's no one best single lifestyle for all of the world. Um, every single body is different and it's gonna work differently for each person. So the key things is, you know, keto for instance, um, might work really, really amazing for one person, but it might not be the best fit for another for your health profile and what's going on in your life and your body. So we want to go through these five um, different lifestyles to help you select one, which one makes the most sense for you in your life, two, which one would be the easiest for you to actually stick to, because it's this isn't about dieting. This is about a lifestyle change, and it's about something you can stick to for the long term. And then three, has foods that will actually bring you joy, uh, that won't leave you feeling deprived, um, but instead empowered and in control of your health and your life. So I just wanted to say all of that, just so you know that there is no right answer. As you go through, just listen with an open heart, open mind, take some notes, and then do some research afterwards um, to figure out what is best for you. Um, Amy, do you wanna go ahead and um, start the PowerPoint that we got? You guys, I'm a visual learner, so I always love having a little bit of a PowerPoint to um, go through as we talk so you guys can actually see what we are talking about. <laughs> All right, can you go over to, there you go. All right, and also, I forgot to introduce our hosts on here too. We've got um, Amy Welch, we've got myself, um, Caitlin Livingston, Marian Noon, and Amy Morton, and we're gonna walk you guys through all of the lifestyles that we have kind of selected and chosen that we're familiar with and we're passionate about, because um, who better to talk about it than people who are actually living it, right? So first, I wanna get started on talking a little bit about our products that are with the Renew Challenge, because I know a lot of you guys are just starting out on Renew and just starting out on these products in general. And so I want you guys to understand what you're taking and how to take it. That's super important, right? So first I'm gonna start out with our Slim. It's our signature product and it's all about, I'm just gonna go real quickly through these, you guys, because I'm sure your sponsors talk to you about it as well. But Slim is our blood sugar regulator. It is our, our main product and the product that we are most known for. It helps with blood, blood sugar regulation, inflammation reduction, hunger control, hormone regulation, and fat reduction. Um, tastes really, really good, but above all else, it is a health drink and a long-term health drink at that. It helps to balance your lipids, which are your fats. It also helps to balance your cholesterol as well. Really, really great for anybody and everybody um, as you're working through a new healthy lifestyle to keep your blood sugars at bay and balanced. Um, the second 
product um, I'm going to cover is the MetaBurn. So that is our fat burner. You guys, I absolutely adore the science behind this product. Um, when it first came out, I got so giddy because it, the long-term, not only just the, the, it's like a waist trainer in a bottle, right? Not only is that how it works, but it also has huge, huge long-term health impl implications because you have in your body white fat and you have brown fat. Brown fat is used as fuel. I'm sure Caitlin's gonna be talking a lot about that. But brown fat is used as fuel. Your body burns it, um, gives you energy, um, that type of thing. But white fat is that visceral fat that collects around your stomach, your um, hips, your thighs, um, your butt, all of those areas. And it's visceral fat and it's not, it collects around your organs as well. And it's not able to be burned by your body very easily at all. And what this product does is it converts that uh, white fat into brown fat and your body is able to use it as fuel and burn it off, which is huge for your long-term health. It's huge for um, reducing um, the prospects of disease and all kinds of things that can come with having too much fat um, surrounding your organs. Um, it also works towards um, helping you manage your cortisol with adapt adaptogenic herbs. Um, and it's also an appetite, appetite suppressant and it works really well for mental, mental clarity and performance as well. So a lot of people use it as a performance enhancing um, product right before they go and work out. But you guys, this is a really, really great product. Um, it target specifically the fat in your stomach, hips, and thigh area. So if you guys are not taking this product, definitely get on it. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to start it on the next slide, but um, in the meantime, I'm going to talk about Lean as well. So Lean has, it's our, um, a lot of people use it as a meal replacement, but it's also a really great post-workout protein supplement. Um, it's delicious. Um, I know a lot of you guys are just starting out on it tonight, or it's not tonight, this month um, but I have taken a lot of protein drinks in my time um, former athlete here and my goodness they used to taste just nasty chalky could barely swallow them down and the this one is just absolutely delicious um, my kids love it too which is amazing but you can use it as a meal replacement or protein supplement it's got a great macro profile um, you can use it as a snack by using it just one scoop instead of two. Um, and then you can, it also has amino acids, um, the great carb content to help you get um, the protein to your muscles as fast as possible. Um, when those two things combine, your body is able to get the protein to your muscles after your workout as fast as you need it. So really, really great um, product. Actually, every single um, bag that you guys purchase as well, we have the lamb philanthropy with it and um, we donate to uh, Feeding America um, 14 meals for every single bag that you purchase. So it's a really great, um, you know, philanthropy as well from um, that perspective. Active is our newest energy drink and it's not just any energy drink, you guys. Um, this is something that can replace if you guys have um, a Red Bull habit or a bang habit or something along those lines, this is an easy swap out to give you quick energy, tastes delicious, it helps with your concentration, it helps with your performance, and it helps with your muscle recovery. So what a lot of people do with this is they actually drink it in conjunction with their Slim, they'll mix them together and either take it before a workout, during a workout, or after the workout because it helps with both performance and active recovery as well. Really great, clean, 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 healthy energy product with loaded with antioxidants as well. So definitely something to, to keep in mind there. Um, Amy, do you want to advance the slide so I can talk a little bit about starting out guide? So you guys, with the starting out um, with your, your products, the biggest thing that I can say to you guys is keep it simple. Workout routine, it is far better to take these products um, every single day from a, on a consistent basis than it is to take them at the right time. So for instance, if you miss your slim and it's like four o'clock in the afternoon, anyway, take it at that point. Getting some feedback. Hold on. There we go. Um, take it at that point. So if you if you skip a product and then you realize it a couple hours later and you didn't take it at your correct time, 
take it at that point. It's far better to take it than to not. There's going to be very different variations that you guys can take with each of these products. But what, like I said earlier, when you're first starting out, like you have never taken these products before, follow this guide. Um, if you don't have it, ask your sponsor for a copy of it, but follow this guide through implementation and then play around with it. Listen to your body's cues. I can tell you guys that I love to take my slim and my active all at once together in the same um, little cup. And it's delicious. And that's what works for me. I take my ProBio 5 and my BioCleanse at night. I take my MetaBurn with my, my lean at lunch and that's it. That's all I got for the day. I just took everything, right? So work through what works for you. Keep it simple. Consolidate the times that you're taking products so you're not taking products throughout the whole day. And then meal replace with your lean which with whatever meal makes the most sense for you, whether that's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, we've had a lot of people have success meal replacing their dinner as well. So just keep all of those things in mind. And I did want to say a special little um, caveat to all of this. If you are doing this challenge and you are embarking on a new workout routine and you or you have been a very active person, I want you guys to use the Slim and the MetaBurn as a pre-workout. Sip on that active throughout your workout in your water bottle um, so that, and then take your lean after. Those four things, MetaBurn and Slim before workout, during workout active, and lean post-workout is going to give you the absolute best combination and using your um, workout the best way because you're going to get that great protein to your muscles. You're going to um, get that Slim and that active in you um, for great energy and, and recovery throughout your workout and the better burn as well. So that's all I got for keeping, for getting started. You guys make sure you're drinking your water as well. And I'm going to kick it over to Amy. She's going to talk to you guys about some tools that you can use throughout this challenge to, um, to best utilize the challenge and just to kind of know where to find everything. Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. So today was my day one. I actually got up at 5 a.m with my roommate Kim. We knocked out almost three miles. We did not want to get up, but hey, we are serious about this Renew You, so I'm really excited. One thing I like about it are the tools and the accountability. So I want to show you and talk about a couple places where, guys, you can get as much accountability as you want. Lots of great resources. So the first one is just for our team, so the people who are our customers and our clients, we have a, an accountability chat. It's through Facebook Messenger. Anyone can be in that. Uh, we can probably share maybe the link to that here in the chat. But what I like about that is you can use that as often as you need to. You definitely want to mute it if you join it. But inside Facebook Messenger, in a thread, you can click the title of the thread and there's shared photos. So there's already tons of recipes. People have been sharing recipe graphics. There also are check-ins. People have been chatting all day today and giving each other thumbs up and kudos for, for getting their workout in. We're sharing workouts. We're sharing tips. So it's really great. It's for ambassadors. It's for customers, anyone on our team. I really recommend you guys get in there. Um, I have some people who just are loving it, and that group chat is really what's keeping them going in their challenge. Now, Plexus also puts together a great, great page. I'm going to show it to you quickly. It's called the Plexus Fit Squad also operates on Facebook, and I know not everyone uses the Facebook um, platform, but this is really great, and the reason I wanna show it to you, so here's the name of it, you type in Plexus Fit Squad, it's a public group, anyone can find it. Now, if you're not already in it, you will have to request to join, uh, but what I love about it, this is where they're gonna have inspiration, they're gonna have daily tips, they're also, guys, going to have fun giveaways, lots of resources, lots of people posting. Look, look at this dad right here. Isn't that awesome? He's working out. Day five for him. Love it. Um, but what I want to show you is the resources. This is the quickest way to find the meal guide, the fitness plan, and the other guide that people um, are seeing here. So when you're in the Fit Squad, click File. And here are the three guides for the Renew You Challenge. The first one here 
uh, you're going to see it maybe pop up. I don't know. Maybe you can't see that. But it's uh, your guide to working out, taking your measurements, taking your products. It has a tracker that you can keep track yourself and it's got some tips. Really, really like it, okay? The other, um, let me go back here. I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, face or Zoom is sometimes wonky when I go to share things. Hang on. I'm going to share Facebook again. Um, the other thing I want you to see is they have a fit. So maybe you're not sure where to start. They have a fit fitness guide. They have also healthy recipes. We also have recipes for lean. Guys, you lean is so versatile. I don't know if Sarah mentioned it, but I love to give it to my kiddos. A lot of us give it to our kids. She thinks it's a milkshake, but I know she's getting vitamins and minerals. I also use it in the wintertime to make healthy hot cocoa. So here's the healthy recipes guide. This is the part two of the Renew You guide. Super simple, and what I like about it is it's not a whole bunch of ingredients that either you don't know what they are or you're not gonna have. It's real food, it's stuff the family can eat, it's just healthier version. So I really like that. And then the other one I'm gonna show you here um, is also their fitness guide. And we all have different ways of working out. We all have different things we like. We all have different time constraints and time commitments. I know Amy Morton may mention that a little bit later. She's kind of our resident personal trainer. But this is some daily workout routines. If you just don't know where to start, do 15 minutes of walking, do a couple of mountain climbers, some jump ropes and sit-ups. I mean, it's so simple, anyone can do it. If you're traveling, this would be great to print out and take with you. I really, really like it, especially if you're just not sure where to start and you're maybe new to this, this working out uh, as part of the challenge. So I really, really like it. And so those files, again, they're in the Plexus Fit Squad. Uh, it's, I can put the link in here so you guys can join it. It's a public group. I definitely recommend it. Now, we're going to kick off here in just a second, the eating styles overview, right? But one thing I just want to talk about uh, is mindset. So most of you guys are already here with the right mindset. You've signed up for the challenge. You're on the call. You're watching the recording. You're ready to go. But do not let yourself get discouraged. Use this challenge as for the next 60 days, not as the end-all be-all. Use it to really kickstart healthy habits. So if today didn't go as planned, and I'm looking at Amanda Grubb, she had a post that she had all these great intentions to work out, but guess what? Her kiddos weren't back in school. Um, she had some stuff at the house, and it just didn't go as planned. Guys, that's okay. Don't, do not write off the next 59 days or the next 30 days. Don't even write off tomorrow or tonight. I want you guys to take your Renew You Challenge one decision at a time, okay? One meal at a time, one workout at a time, just one decision at a time, and not get into that all or nothing mindset, okay? So as we go through these healthy eating plans, remember what Sarah said, this is not a diet. Plexus encourages healthy eating, but we're not a diet. Some of you, for your Renew You Challenge, you're just gonna give up fast food. Or maybe you're gonna cut out soda. That's totally fine and that's awesome. But we know for other people, they really want a prescriptive guide of things to eat and things to not. And they're looking for di different options of what might work best for them. So I'm actually gonna kick it over to Marion. Uh, she is gonna talk first about our plant-based eating plan. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. So, I don't know. Okay. You're muted again. There you go. Is You're that good. better? All right. So, plant-based. Um, first thing I want to say is I would, I could spend an hour reiterating all of the things that Amy and Sarah said, they have so much value. And after being in this business and in this, taking these products for four years, guys, like 
I can't even tell you how powerful they are, right? But one of the things that I have realized as a coach and what I was so excited about doing this call when Sarah and Amy reached out to us about offering variety is it's so true, like different strokes for different folks, right? And I realized through my coaching over the last four years that not my modality of uh, exercise or my modality of eating style or my modality of mindset doesn't quite work for everybody. And that's why I love our team. I love that we're offering a variety where you guys can come in and look at all of the different skill sets that each of the leaders on this team have, and you can grab and choose what works for you and not necessarily one. You can take pieces and parts from each one and create your own dynamic. And that's exactly what I did. So I'm going to give you a little bit of history, right? The reason I joined Plexus was not for weight loss. I've always been, since I was 18 years old, an exercise fanatic, right? And I've been pretty fit, not super fit, but I've been um, in a healthy BMI, but my gut was out of whack, which is what led me to Plexus. And then Amy, in turn, helped me drop 10 prescriptions by helping the dysbiosis in my gut through healing my gut, right? So I, it's kind of ironic to me in a way. Um, some of you know me, some of you might not, and some of you that don't know me might look at me and think, oh, she's the yogi, oh, she's the hippie, oh, she's all plant-based, oh, she's vegetarian, oh, she's saved the earth, but that has not always been me. And I have to truly thank Amy for introducing me to Plexus for that. Um, I was very unhealthy growing up. I had a single mom. She worked 80 hours a week. I ate nothing but McDonald's and Wendy's and whatever I could get my hands on. I had nothing but empty carbs every day, all day, and I did not know what solid nutrition was. Um, and throughout my life, I continued that pattern of eating to the point I got to three kids and very ill on 10 prescriptions with multiple illnesses. And Amy introduced me to Plexus. I started healing my microbiome, and then I started craving veggies. Then I went on this journey of understanding holistic health, not only in the aspect of the microbiome, but also in oils and clean eating and, and I mean, literally anything and everything. It, I just went down the rabbit hole of that because I started to realize how much better I felt, right? And I'll never forget, I was probably three months in on the triplex. I started on Slim. The Slim kind of reduced my cravings for carbohydrates. I never was a sweet person. I never had, was obsessed with ice cream and all of that, that a lot of my um, people that I coach are, but I was a carb addict. And I'll never forget, three months in on the triplex, I was cooking um, gumbo and I was cutting up celery and the smell of the celery made my mouth water. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to take a bite of this. And before I knew it, I ate three stalks of celery. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. Like, there's something to this. There has to be something to this, right? And I, I'll save you all the long story, but I learned after that that I my body was craving the healing foods that it desired and then it led me to eating right for your type and all of these different um different ideas of what I should be eating and then flash forward I became a veggie addict and I started to steer away from meat not that I'm not anti-meat and it, I still eat meat today till this to this day, but I'm mostly pescatarian. And then Allie, when she joined my team, she asked me, she's like, what are you eating? How do you stay so fit? How do you stay so lean? And I told her, and this was two and a half years into my plexus journey, I got to the point where I started to listen to the intuition of what my body was calling me to, right? And this is what's beautiful about what we're offering tonight. There's going to be different people that are going to offer different diets that are going to offer different ideas, and you can grab, pick, and choose. And I told Allie, I was like, honestly, I just listened to what my body calls me to, and that's been vegetables. And you can ask any of the girls on this team. We've been to multiple team retreats together, and they see me at lunchtime. I will literally cook coconut oil in a vegetable melody 
and it's delicious to me, but it might not work for you. So I'm not going to go through meals and um, recipes and all of that. I just really want to point out that when you start to heal your gut, you can start to listen to that intuition of your body and what it craves. And you can start to, to lose the weight that you desire, but really that's a side effect. It, it's the healing that takes place that leads you to the intuition of what your body chooses. And I love that we're all starting out together with these options. So as you start this healing path, and as you start to see the changes in your body, you can listen to those intuitions and you can make the right choices. For me, plant-based primarily with some uh, seafood involved and sometimes meat when I can feel that my iron or my B12 is getting low, which is probably maybe twice a week, works for my body, but it doesn't work for all bodies, right? So look, as you go through this journey, I really want you to pay attention to the changes, the, the, the minor changes that you're feeling in your body. And Amy will talk more about this, I'm sure. Um, Amy Morton, when she speaks, that you want to keep a food journal and you want to start to log not only your physical uh, measurements of your transformation, but also your dietary changes, because you will notice if you are consistent and you're drinking your water and you're doing what Amy and Sarah suggested and what all of the others uh, to follow what I'm saying suggest and grab what works for you, you will see that you're going to start feeling in your body what's right for you. So you want to start tracking your measurements and you want to start tracking your foods and you're going to start seeing how that transforms naturally if you stay consistent on your products. I'm super excited for all of you guys. If you want specific recipes as far as plant-based living goes, feel free to send me a private message. But I guess the, the core of my message to you guys is listen. Listen to your body and take what works for you and make it your own from everything that all of us are going to teach you guys. And that's all. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you so much, Marianne. Um, and I've definitely watched her transformation over the past um, couple years to a more plant-based diet. Um, I the the, the plant-based diet. I'm going to go ahead and mute you, Marianne. Sorry. Uh, the plant-based plant-based diet um, kind of leads into what I'm going to talk about with the Mediterranean diet. So I want to just educate you guys a little bit about what the Mediterranean diet is, how you can implement it into your lifestyle, um, kind of what it isn't as well, and the origin of it and the health benefits of it as well. So it's long been characterized as kind of the gold standard for diets. Um, it has literally existed for decades um, in certain areas of the Mediterranean and has literally hundreds and hundreds of studies supporting why it is so beneficial for your long-term health. So initially, it's known as the ultimate heart health, um, heart healthy diet. Um, but new research that's come out in the past couple of years has shown that its benefits are actually far more, um, far larger and far um, further reaching um, than they initially thought. It's not just good for heart health. Um, the pattern of eating that is um, just that is illustrated with the Mediterranean diet is actually going to help you protect you from cancer. It's going to help you live longer. It's going to protect your brain and even improve your mood, your mood and um, help you avoid chronic disease as well. It's super sustainable from a eating perspective, how the, the, um, items that you're gonna eat are farmed, um, where you get them, that sort of thing. So it's a very sustainable diet. And it's also um, low on the food chain and very, very affordable as well. So what it is, is it focuses on fresh foods above all else, local foods, whole foods, mainly vegetables, um, but also limited animal protein with most of that coming from fish and then also olive oil as the main source of healthy fat. It also uses um, only whole grains, um, so you're allowed to have bread with this one, um, and certain types of dairy, as far, and, and then as far as drinks go as well, you've got water, wine, um, herbal tea, and coffee for the drink staples that go alongside this diet. And yes, I did say wine. I know a lot of people are like, wait, what? Wine and a diet and a lifestyle that's healthy and allows you to um, live long and reduces cancer risks 
it's true. So <laughs> I'll get to that as well. Um, but basically, all it is, is it's really, really focusing on um, very, very healthy fats, um, lean protein, little to no sugar, whole foods, and it really limits red meat. So that is one thing that the American diet, um, you know, might be a little bit contradictory to how some of us are eating right now, right? Um, the diet is also very, very highly packed with um, antioxidants and omegas. So I want to give you guys just a little history on it. I know this, you guys are not truly here for a history lesson, but I want you guys to understand kind of the origins of this and why science has backed this up so much. Um, the origins of this diet actually trace back specifically to Crete, which is an island in Greece, um, and then also to Southern Italy. Um, this kind of ideology and the name of the diet itself can be super confusing um, because you might just think, oh, Mediterranean diet, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna hop in, start eating some pizza. That's great, that's Greek pizza, right? Like, that's cool. It's not really like that. So there's, um, if you're looking on Pinterest, for instance, which is where I get most of my recipes, um, if you type in Mediterranean food, not every single one of those things is actually gonna be falling within the Mediterranean diet. So if this is a way of life for you that you wanna start, you really definitely want to actually research the diet and what it comprises of, which I'm gonna start that thought process here. And if this one speaks to you, I encourage you to go do your own research and understand the diet on your, your own too, because just searching Mediterranean food isn't necessarily going to um, give you all of the, the, the right recipes and, and that kind of thing, and it's not going to give you the health benefits. So keep that in mind. Um, but it actually started in um, southern Italy and in Crete, like I said, in the beginning, um, it was beginning to be studied. They'd been eating like this for Ever, but it began to be studied in 1948. So this has been around, along, around for a very long time. It started to be more extensively studied in the 1960s. And um, it was studied because the scientists started to realize just how extraordinarily long the lifespan of the people living in these regions was and their odd lack of chronic disease. Um, so that kind of brought the attention to it and um, the scientists have been studying it extensively for decades since then. There's also 20 different regions, I kind of already covered this, but there's 20 different um, countries that border them that have similar eating styles. And so um, what I'm about to cover for the guidelines is super important to understand because not all of those ways of eating actually fall in line with this specific diet in this specific way of life. So so um, the, it's actually the ratios of the carbs, the carbs, the proteins, and the fats, as well as the sourcing, um, being cognizant of the sourcing of your foods, that really is what makes this successful. So the guidelines here are that um, food, your food source is going to be mainly from plant sources. This includes fruits, vegetables, beans, nuts, grains. Um, vegetables are actually the main course. And then meat and poultry or fish um, is more of a side dish and it's not actually consumed daily. The vegetables um, should be local to your region and not necessarily Mediterranean. So I live in Texas. Um, not all of my um, vegetables are gonna end up being the vegetables that are found in Crete. But that's an, an important thing to think about. It needs to be your region. They need to be fresh, okay? Um, the food in this diet is very minimally processed. Um, the meals are made up of vegetable-based, simple home-cooked dishes. Um, local and seasonal foods are absolutely preferred, which often uh, maximizes the health benefit and the micronutrients and antioxidant content in these foods. It makes them more fresh, more um, viable for your body. Um, and it's also better for the environment as well. Um, but olive oil is the main fat. So you're going to replace, if you go on this um, lifestyle, you're going to replace everything with olive oil. No more butter, no more margarine, um, that type of thing. The olive oil is a key, key staple that cannot be um, swapped out in this diet, okay? Um, it's a very much the, the big key in this. Um, so extra virgin olive oil is used for all of your cooking needs in this, including roasting, sauteing, um, baking, the whole nine. Um, so daily consumption of low and moderate amounts of quality cheese and yogurt is key. Now I want to say something about the yogurt, you guys. Um, read your labels. 
if you're going to be starting on this, this lifestyle, do not go up to um, your local grocery store and grab a Yoplait yogurt that is uh, flavored with strawberries and call that your, your breakfast, right? You need to buy plain yogurt with no sugar added, high quality yogurt. Um, none of the ones that have all the different flavorings added, um, that have been altered. Um, Greek yogurt is a really, really good thing to, to, uh, focus on for that. But no sugar added is super, super key in this. Um, weekly consumption of moderate amounts of fish is actually a huge part of this um, as well. And then um, poultry as well, but fish is definitely favored over poultry in this. Um, and then zero to four eggs per week on this particular lifestyle. Fresh fruit is typically a dessert. Um, or a small snack. So it's not a main part of your plate. The vegetables are actually going to be the main part of your plate. Um, red meat is only consumed a couple times a month. Um, you're mainly focusing more on the fish and then also the poultry. Um, moderate consumption of wine um, is okay with this and it happens normally with meals. So you can have one to two glasses a day of wine on this and it actually fits in with the profile of all of this. But I will say kind of a good rule of thumb for for most of this is um, one uh, glass for women and two glasses for men I know it's not fair but um, that's kind of how it works um, what I thing I will say and this is not in any of the research I did but you guys be really careful with the wine we get here in America um, a lot of it has tons and tons of chemicals that are added to it and lots of sugar so make sure you're buying really high quality wine as well if you're going to add something like that to your daily consumption okay um and the true mediterranean diet is about 40 percent carbohydrates so um just think about that you can actually have bread every single day as well three servings of bread um so that's a big part of it too but you've got to make sure that it's whole grains so i'm going to give you a brief rundown and then kick it over to our next speaker but vegetables six servings a day guys fruit local seasonal only for snacking and dessert. Dairy, two to three servings a day, and that's um, regular fat cheese and yogurt. Goat and sheep cheese is, is the main ones here. Meat and poultry, red meat isn't really a, a huge part of it. Um, and then fish and seafood, um, it can also be canned fish or seafood, two, two servings a week. Um, grains and bread, three times a day. Um, and those are always accompanied with the, um, the vegetable dishes. So you can do pastas, you can do breads, that kind of thing. Um, beans, two to three servings a week. That's a huge part of this um, protein source for this as well. Um, your greens and all that. So here's the bottom line, guys. This diet has a huge focus on fresh and not hot processed ingredients, local, sustainable sources, healthy fats, and a very small focus on beef and chicken, and instead getting your daily protein from beans, cheese, yogurt, and fish. Um, so the health benefits that come along with this are lowered risk of cancer, specifically uterine cancer and breast cancer, reduced inflammation due to the omegas that are found in all the foods, improvement in your brain and heart health that actually boasts a 25% lower risk of heart disease if you follow this habitually. Um, it helps to ease pain because a compound in the olive oil is called, I'm, I'm going to mess up the pronunciation of this, but it's called oleocanthal um, and actually has the same or similar effects to NSAIDs like aspirin and ibuprofen. Um, slows aging, um, strengthens, strengthens, strengthens skin, and increases life expectancy, and then also helps you reduce weight. So I believe um, Caitlin was, or was it Amy? Amy's next. Um, I'm going to pass on over to her to talk about Whole30. I'm next. Hey, guys. Okay, so I am going to talk about Whole30. For those of you guys, though, who don't know my story, I came to Plexus because of thyroid disease, and I also have had one lobe removed. My story is incredible, but one thing about those of us who live with thyroid disease is that our bodies don't actually process glucose as they should, so we typically do better on a lower carb diet. We also do better on lower inflammatory foods. And so that is really what Whole30 kind of centers around. Now I'm talking about it because I've done about nine rounds of Whole30. I did it back the first time around 2010 
well, before it was popular, before anybody knew what it was, before you could buy anything that was Whole30 approved. It was so hard to do it back then. Now, the last round I did, though, was just this past fall. I did the 30 days very, very strict as it's written, and then I did the reintroduction phase. So Whole30 is very popular. I hear a lot of people talk about it. Many of you guys are probably thinking, yes, here we go. I'm so excited. I want to do Whole30 for this challenge. But what many people don't realize is that Whole30 is actually an elimination plan and it helps you to learn what foods are triggers for you in your body that cause inflammatory responses and it also was designed to change your emotional relationship with food so if you're someone who does have that emotional relationship maybe you're not really sure about certain foods this i think is kind of great to reset that it actually began back in 2009 with Melissa Hartwig. She blogged about a 30-day food experiment, and it was so transformational for her that the Whole30 uh, plan was born from that. Now, since then, millions of people have changed their lives because when you look at Whole30, when you reduce for 30 days these inflammatory foods, people notice things like less allergies less anxiety, skin issues, because the inflammatory foods go away, and guess what else happens? Your gut starts to heal a little bit more through the foods that you're eating. Now, one thing I'll tell you, though, about Whole30 is that I uh, think it's a great uh, basis for getting your emotional eating under control. I think it's a great experiment. I personally do not think it's sustainable. I'll talk about that in a minute. So let's actually go over the rules of Whole30 because unlike everyone else's slides, mine just have a lot of no's, okay? Um, and I know Sarah has done Whole30 with us and she might be able to speak to uh, this at the end. But So for Whole30, you cannot have any dairy. So that, that means none. And when they say none, they mean none. So no goat's milk, no sheep's milk, no cow's milk, no milk, no cheese, no cream, no kefir, no yogurt, no sour cream, no ice cream, no frozen yogurt, nothing dairy, nada. You cannot have any legumes. That includes all beans, all right? No black beans, pinto beans, navy beans. It also means no lentils, no chickpeas, guys, no hummus, all right? No peanuts, no peanut butter. It also includes, uh, I put no soy on there separately, but soy is technically a legume, so no soy, no soy sauce, no miso, no tofu, no tempa, no edamame, nothing with soy in it. You also cannot have any sugar. And this goes for, this is how it's different than paleo. You cannot even have natural sugar. So I'm talking no honey, no maple syrup, no agave, no coconut sugar, no date syrup, no monk fruit, no stevia. Nothing, no Splenda, which I'm anti-chemical sweeteners anyway, but you can't have any of that. It's on the ingredients list. And I remember back in 2010 when we did our first round, trying to find bacon back then with no sugar was about impossible, and it was about 10 bucks a pack. Luckily now you can get no sugar uh, bacon very regularly at the grocery store. If you live in Texas, HEB actually just came out with their own HEB brand of no sugar bacon that isn't going to cost you a paycheck. So you also cannot have alcohol. Uh, you cannot have any grains. So that means no wheat, no rye, no sorghum, no sprouted grains. So no quinoa, no uh, corn, no wheat, no rice, no bran, no germ, no starch, and so on. Okay. You cannot have any processed additives. So that means no carrageenan, no MSG, no sulfates, no nitrates, no nitrates, all the stuff that's in like deli meat. Because guys, all of those things are inflammatory. The other thing about Whole30 that you cannot do if you follow the 30-day program for emotional eating, you uh, cannot step on the scale. And they really want you to eat whole foods. So they don't want you to take things you can have and turn them into cheats. So you're allowed to have a banana and you're allowed to have cashew butter. They don't want you to melt that and mush it up uh, so it tastes like a dessert, right? Because you're really um, changing your relationship with food. So 
then some people ask me, they're like, well, what the heck can you eat? You just gave me a list of no's now, and I'm lost. I don't know what else I can eat. You actually on Whole30 eat tons of real food. So you eat meat, seafood, eggs, all kinds of vegetables, including potatoes. Now, back in 2010, when I first did it, you weren't allowed to have potatoes. They've since changed that, and you can have both white and sweet potato. Uh, you also can have fruits. You can have natural fats. You can have herbs, spices, seasonings. But it's a simple list of what you can have because they're whole and they're unprocessed. So it does make reading labels uh, very important. You can't just go buy organic tomato sauce because most of it has sugar in it. You can't just go buy chicken broth. Most of it has sugar in it. Ketchup, most of it has sugar. So a lot of that requires you to read your labels. I can say that for us and my family and even with Adelaide and we're living with Kim and Greg, we all did it together. It's not sustainable for me, but it definitely changed our relationship with food for instance, um, so the concept of Whole30, after you do 30 days, then they have a reintroduction process that's, that's systematic. You slowly reintroduce these foods that you've avoided for 30 days, and you do it properly so you can see how your body reacts. Um, Steve absolutely cannot have dairy, and then he has since confirmed that with an inflammatory blood test. So that is a lifestyle change for us. He now does nut creamer. He does dairy-free ice cream. And so these are things that we have learned. The whole family, we can't do gluten grains. We are very inflammatory, all of us on gluten grains. So if we do have something, we just have gluten-free now. And so for us, we don't do strict whole 30, um, but it definitely has change that relationship and our choices that we make when it comes to foods and I'm happy to chat offline later people can find me on Facebook if they're watching the recording um, to give you some of my favorite recipes I mean almost anything you can turn into Whole30 you just have to google it right like Whole30 chili Whole30 pizza uh, just about anything you can convert to Whole30 so now I'm going to kick it over to Caitlin because she has had incredible results and is an expert on what she's about ready to talk about. Hey there, Do, am I unmuted now? Yes, you're good. All right, so hi everyone. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about two different things. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Caitlin Livingston. I am a senior gold Plexus ambassador and I've been taking the products for a little more than two years now. Um, I'm also a medical laboratory scientist. So bear with me, I might get a little geeky with you. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about intermittent fasting. This is something that I've been kind of playing around with since last summer ish spring ish um it was uh I, you know had a couple of friends that were telling me about it and i did some a little bit of research and i was like you know that actually kind of works for me it just kind of fits into my lifestyle um so let me tell you a little bit about what it is Inter intermittent fasting is a way to cycle between periods of feasting and fasting so the majority of us actually we do fast every night after we finish our dinner if you're not having a midnight snack <laughs> for until the time that you have breakfast in the morning. So I would say that like the standard American diet uh, generally get about a 12 hour fast every night, which is really good. But whenever we start noticing um, symptoms of uh, insulin resistance, where maybe some belly fat or um, you might have some blood work where your doctor is starting to say maybe you're pre-diabetic, um, all of these things kind of build up over time. Insulin is your fat storage hormone. Its job is to take the sugar into your cells, open the door so that your body can have energy. And if there's too much sugar for your insulin to handle, it sacks it all away to store as fat. So basically with intermittent fasting or with fasting in general, it is the fastest way to lower your insulin. So when your insulin is low, one of the benefits of having a lower insulin is that it signals your body to burn its stored fat. So as your insulin drops, your body's going to start releasing that fat, fat that it's been stored for energy. Um, this allows your body to use that stored energy for fuel. 
And then, you know, I've been doing a lot of research into it there. It, with extended fasting, you have increase in like growth hormone. Um, your body starts to actually recycle, recycle all the old falling apart pieces. Um, this is called autophagy. And there's been a lot of research into um, uh, it being a tool to fight cancer. And actually intermittent fasting is an ancient secret of health. This is something that humans have been doing for millennia. And I don't know if you've noticed, like if your pet gets sick, they won't eat. And that's because they're trying to rest their digestive system and um, go through a period of healing. So how do you do intermittent fasting? So what is an example? So a lot of people start with kind of an easy way to do it where they do, they call it a 16 slash eight pattern where you eat for an eight hour window, say 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then you fast beside that. This gives your body a break from that insulin. And whenever you get insulin resistance, it's basically because your insulin is so high that it's like your body just kind of sticks its fingers in its ears and it's like, I can't hear it, I can't hear it. And it becomes less effective. So the goal of getting their insulin low is to help you start tapping into that stored fat. So Amy, I don't know if you wanna to switch to the next slide. I kind of wanna tie it into how a ketogenic diet can benefit these um, periods of fasting. Um, so wh whenever you're fasting, your goal is to keep that insulin low. You can continually keep the, your insulin low by following a ketogenic diet because the, the way that the macronutrients are um, in, the, in the diet, it actually lets your insulin stay low because it, what it is, it's a very low carb, okay? High fat and moderate protein. The reason why they focus on those high fats is because fat doesn't stimulate insulin as much as a protein or carb would. So by eating majority fats, you're not going to stimulate as much insulin as if you ate a high carb diet. Um, the reduction of carbs is what's going to put your body into that metabolic, keto metabolic state. It's called ketosis, okay? Ketosis is where the fat from your body and food is burned for energy. So if you're not consuming enough fat, your body's going to need that fuel. Your brain needs fuel. So what it's going to do is it's going to burn through its storage. It's going to make these ketones. Ketones are an alternative fuel source for the body. Your body starts making ketones whenever you don't have any carbohydrates or glucose at you know, your disposal. So if you eliminate all that sugar and um, the processed grains and things like that, you're, you're going to have this lower carb. Your body's going to enter this metabolic state of ketosis without fasting. It's whenever you combine the two with intermittent fasting and the keto diet that you get that benefit of that low, low insulin consistent. Um, it's, really, it's really about understanding what your hormones are doing. And that's why I love the, the Slim too, because it has ingredients that help keep your insulin more effective. So it also is going to help reduce that insulin sensitivity or resistance, mind me. Um, so when you're in this fat burning state, you're in a state of ketosis. A lot of the benefits are less hunger. Um, your body's not constantly spiking and dipping with the increase of added sugars. You don't even need sugar in your diet. Your body can actually produce its own. It's this really cool process called gluconeogenesis. And it's pretty amazing. Your body doesn't need carbohydrates to survive. You only need fat and protein. Um, and like I was saying, the fastest way to enter ketosis is through fasting. It's just that eating that ketogenic diet is gonna increase the benefits of the lower insulin. So my main thing is focusing on whole foods. I think that it actually has a lot of tie-ins with a lot of the diets that we've mentioned. You know, I like that Sarah mentioned, look at your sources. One of my favorite things for meats is making sure that I have like grass fed or um, marine or, or ocean caught fish or wild caught fish. Uh, I like to make sure that I'm getting those good grass-fed butter, um, the just quality foods. Um, and I think that there, I like to focus on all the things that I can have, like high quality dairy, high quality meats, cheeses, um, 
vegetables that grow above ground. So no potatoes on this, but honestly, my waistline has been loving it. <laughs> so I'm not complaining. I don't miss French fries or the 30 pounds that I've lost since starting this plan. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if you have any more questions, I'd love to go into more details about it. There's specific specific macronutrient ratios they want you to have. It's like 70% fat, 25% protein, and 5% carbs. Um, you can stay under 50 net carbs, but ideally you want to stay under net 20 net carbs total. Um, I actually put together a list of some of my family's favorite recipes. My family has not been complaining at all about any of these recipes I make. Things like cheeseburger soup and <laughs> steak and broccoli, asparagus and salmon. Basically, it's a meat and a veggie, you know, with some fat. And if you find that you're hungry, add more fats, <laughs> you know. Um, and a lot of my healthy fats are going to come from nuts, um, my oils, coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil. I cook my veggies in bacon grease. Um, yeah, I could share some recipes. Just let me know. I would love to, to, you know, tell you more about what I've been learning. I hope that helped. <laughs> I think Amy Morton's going next. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, I am. Let me know if you guys can hear me. We can. You're good. Okay. Can you see me? Yes. Am I centered okay? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> it's weird because you can't see yourself. So, um, and I'm not supposed to be able to see myself, right? You should be able to as a panelist. But oh, okay. okay, well, I can't, but <laughs> guys, I'm so sorry I've had some computer issues tonight. I got a brand new computer for Christmas, and um, so I'm on my phone, so uh, if I move out of the picture, let me know. <laughs> can't really see what's going on. So um, I wanted to speak tonight on one of my very favorite topics, and it's the importance of a food journal. So I am a huge, huge believer in keeping a food journal if you want to lose weight. I mean, even if you don't want to lose weight and you just want to like keep yourself in check, it's a good idea. Sometimes for uh, one of my kids, um, I've done it with Caroline recently, for example, when I feel like Caroline's getting off with her diet, I'll keep a food journal on her for three days to um, make sure she's getting everything she needs. So, um, Anyways, that's kind of off topic, but food journals are amazing. Food journals equal weight loss. If you want to lose weight, keep a food journal. And I have to admit, I'm very old school. I am a believer in pencil to paper food journals. There's something about taking the pencil or the pen to that paper and writing it down that makes you stop and think, oh, should I eat the rest of my kids' goldfish? Oh, she left uh, this pasta on her plate. Should I eat it? you know, you're, you're going to be like, I don't want to write it down. So you're not going to eat it. So anyways, um, I highly recommend for the next 60 days that you keep a food journal. Um, I really like those little tiny, I wanted to have one for tonight, but I don't have one. Those little tiny um, ones you can get at Walmart, like a pack of five. And they're like little tiny spiral notebooks. You can carry them with you in your purse. Um, I do understand that most people are not old school anymore and most people like to type things in their phone like in the my fitness pal which i i am a fan of my fitness pal i really am it works as long as you use it for some reason when people use apps like that i feel like they do it for two weeks and they stop um as long as you use it the whole 60 days it will work um so um the well, where was I? The food journal, my fitness pal. So yeah, just do what works for you, but keep a food journal. So you can write it down or you can um, use, a, use a my fitness pal or there's like my diet diary. There's a whole bunch of them that are great, but really just recording your food will help you lose weight. They've done research studies on it and food journals equal weight loss. I've been a trainer for 18 years now. My clients that keep food, food journals lose weight. My clients that don't, well, some of them lose weight, but it takes a long time, you know? But it's amazing when I can get someone to keep a food journal. 
So um, that's my advice for the next 60 days. Okay, so I wanted to speak also about tracking macros. I'm sure you've all heard about macros. Um, and you're probably wondering, what is a macro? <laughs> what is it? Well, it's a macronutrient. So um, uh, before I get too into macros and how to track them, I do have to talk about calories. So I did have this whole long presentation for you all about how to figure out how many calories you should eat per day if you want to lose weight. And as I was reading it, when everyone else was talking, I'm like, holy cow, this is just too much uh, math <laughs> for tonight. I got to be honest with you, it's really good math and it, it's how you figure out your calories. But you guys don't really need to know this because you can go online and Google how many calories, you know, go to Google, how many calories should I eat to lose weight? It's going to pull up a whole bunch of different calorie calculators and you can choose one. And um, the way that you can figure out if it gives you the right number of calories per day is take your current weight and um, multiply it by 12, and then take your current weight and multiply it by 18. Make sure those the calories are um, between there. Or, better idea, just ask me if it's a good calorie calculator. I have a few that I really love. Most of them are great. So just pick a calorie calculator and it's gonna ask you like, it's gonna ask you usually your age, your weight, your height, um, and then it's gonna ask your activity level, a couple different questions. And it's basically gonna just give you how many calories you should eat to lose weight. Once you have that, you can compute how many macros you need to eat to lose weight. Okay, what's a macro? Oh, one more thing about calories. Um, I am a huge believer in. Well, this is how it works to lose weight. You gotta go negative calories. So, um, so let's say you, well, I'll keep it really simple. So 3,500 calories is a pound. If you wanna lose one pound a week, you gotta go negative 3,500 calories. If you wanna lose two pounds a week, you gotta go negative 7,000. That sounds like a lot, but it's really not. If you're burning calories and if you're also cutting out about 500 calories a day, but that's how you lose weight is you eat less and you move more. I'm just a really old school person. I mean, that's how, how you lose fat. You can do all, all these diets. I'm, you know, I like all of them and I'm a big believer in you have to find what works, but when you do lose weight, it is the calories, um, being less in the end, you know? So um, anyways, so just make sure you're eating less and moving more. <laughs> and that helps a lot. So um, the macros, cause that's all the rage right now. So what are the macronutrients? So we have protein is one, fat is one, and carbs is one. Some people also label alcohol as one, but we won't worry about that today. Um, and I'm like a Mediterranean diet lover. So if you want to have a glass of red, <laughs> go for it. So, um, you know, just one though, <laughs> just one. So um, the macronutrients. So how do you figure out how many macros? And you can, by the way, you can chart them in my fitness pal. And I know there's there's like a lot of different companies out there, like Stronger You is one, if you guys have heard of Stronger You, that help you count your macros. And all these people that are counting their macros, they're losing all this weight, it's great. Well, you can figure it out on your own. Um, so here's how you do it. Once you get your ideal calorie intake, um, I'll just have to use some examples. So you get your ideal calorie intake from Google. You Google it, you figure that out. Um, or feel free to message me. You're, um, next, you've got that. So then number two, you're going to figure out how many protein macros you should eat per day. That is the easiest one to figure out. We really should have between 0.8 and 1.3 grams of protein per pound of body weight per day. So for my clients, I usually say one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So 
if you weigh 120 pounds, you want to have 120 grams of protein. Super easy, right? You weigh 150 pounds, you want to have about 150 grams of protein. Okay, so, and you can chart that in my fitness pal if you want to do that for the macros. Um, so then we got to calculate the fat intake. How many um, fat macros should we have? So um, ideal is between 15 and 35% of your total daily calorie intake. So I usually tell my clients 25, let's do 25%, you know, so between 15 and 35. So um, let's say that your uh, calories that you're eating is 1600 per day to lose weight, you would take 25% of 400. And since there's nine calories per gram of fat, is this making sense? It's probably not. You divide 400 by nine and you get 44 grams of fat per day. I might just skip to the end here. The carbs is easy too. It's another math equation, but super easy when you guys could, if you could see this, I can't screen share because of my computer, but um, there is an awesome website that I will put here in the chat that shows you how to do this. And it's so easy to figure out how many macros you should eat per day to lose weight. And if you do it, you will lose weight. I have to say it's very similar to counting calories um so just it just kind of takes it up a notch from counting calories um so yeah so that's about it with calories and macros and food journals you can tell i'm kind of a i don't know an, <laughs> an old school nerd with this stuff but anyways it's worked for me and worked for my clients and um just uh, for the next 60 days, uh, just do your best to move as much as you can and eat healthy. And every diet that everyone suggested tonight is great. You can't go wrong with any of them. I have had clients that have done all of them, several different um, clients that have done these and everyone does get results. The key is when you're done with your 60 days, you can't just stop. You know, you, you, you can't do that. That's not going to work. Um, you got to stay con consistent with the products, most important. And after that, I mean, like if you're getting off the whole 30, you got to kind of ease off of it slowly, but still keep most of those principles, you know. S same with all of them, with the intermittent fasting and keto. You can't just stop cold turkey. Oh, I made it, 60 days. Woo. That's not going to work. So anyways, Absolutely. it's why we call it a lifestyle change as opposed to, you know, just a, a quick diet for 60 days. The Renew Challenge is all about getting you guys a kickstart into a new life for yourself, a new relationship, a new headspace, um, you know, new relationship with food, new headspace. Um, so I did want to say thank you so much, Amy, because I've heard so many great stories coming about from people just staying within their macros every single day and having such good results. Um, but what I love about each one of these lifestyles is that our products work hand in hand with each one of them um, because the focus is the same. Each one of these um, lifestyles you heard about, um, you know, your blood sugar needs to be balanced, that these um, are going to help heal your gut, that they're going to help fill nutritional gaps, and they're going to help reduce inflammation. Well, guess what? Our products do all of those things. Our products work so hard to fill nutritional gaps, to balance your blood sugar throughout the day, through healing your gut and enhancing your microbiome and um, giving quality ingredients to our multivitamins and also reducing inflammation. So each one of these diets works so well hand in hand with, um, or lifestyle, sorry, works so well hand in hand with our products. And the goal of the lifestyle and the goal of the supplements are the same. So they're only going to help your results on each one of these, um, these lifestyles. Amy Welch, um, before we close up, I wanted to just address one thing with you, if you could unmute yourself. Um, I wanted to see if you could kind of expound on the fact that the Whole30 um, asked for you not to have any stevia. 
And so that question comes up a whole bunch because our slim is sweetened with stevia and our lean has stevia in it as well. And so I want to address that. If any one of you guys are thinking, well, shoot, this is a plexus call and she's talking about these products are working so great with um, with the plexus slim and the lean and everything. How does that work when it specifically says that that is not okay? Can you address that for us real quick? Yes, I can. I'm so glad you brought that up because I get that question a lot or many of you guys may have heard someone say, oh my goodness, I can't take my plexus while I'm doing Whole30 and that's actually not true. When you even ask the experts and if you read the Whole30 book, so a lot of people ask me, do I need to read the book? You don't have to to do the program. Their website and blog is amazing, but the book really gets to the why of the program. It even recommends gut health supplements like probiotics and magnesium and omegas, all the stuff plexus has. But with the stevia, the reason you're cutting out sugar in Whole30 is to get your body to stop craving it and stop depending on it, okay? So they're cutting artificial, they're cutting natural sweeteners like stevia because they don't want you to still eat the cookie, even though it has stevia in it. The reason you're allowed to have the stevia that's in the lean and that is in the pink drink specifically is because the pink drink is doing the exact same thing Whole30 is. It is eliminating your cravings for sugar. It's eliminating your body's dependence on sugar and it's regulating that insulin. So that is why it is allowed. You know, you also will see for people who drink kombucha, it has a little bit of sugar in it. That's also allowed. So there is that kind of gray area, but I implore you guys, if you do Whole30, you will want to murder somebody if you do it without your plexus. It is not easy to detox from all of those foods. It's a lot easier when your gut and your insulin and your blood sugars are already regulated, which is what the pink drink specifically does. Thank you so much. Yeah, I knew that question was going to come up, so I just wanted to address it. Um, and like she said, it's your, your slim is not you cheating out, you know, the whole 30 or anything like that. It is, you know, when using it as a substitute for a dessert, it's actually something that's benefiting your health. Um, and so that's truly the, where the emotional side of the stevia being a uh, on the no list comes from. So thank you guys so much. We're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. I appreciate all of you guys for hopping on. Hopefully you guys learned something um, in our chat thread and on our team pages. We're going to be posting some information on everything. Um, that we talked about. I'll post info on the Mediterranean diet. I'm sure the other ladies will post some links to research on theirs as well um, so that you guys can make an informed decision. We hope that this was helpful, educational, and empowering. Um, we are always here to be your partners throughout the rest of this Renew Challenge, and we're cheering you on. We can't wait to see where everybody ends in the next 60 days. Have a good Monday night. We'll see you guys later. Bye.